Good morning everybody or good afternoon depending on what side of the world you're on. My name's Lisa, I'm coming to you from Christchurch in New Zealand and this is my channel Unwind and Knit With Me where I talk about all things knitting and yarn. Uh, it's my passion and I just like to share it with you. So if you're an existing viewer, thank you and welcome back. If you're a new viewer to my channel, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, please remember to subscribe, that would be lovely, uh, and share it with your friends. Tell your friends about it because the more subscribers we get, the better. Uh, and welcome. I, I do hope you've got a cup of tea or coffee and you're knitting because uh, I do have quite a bit to go through. Before I start, I just wanted to mention um, just a quick shout out for our New Zealand viewers to mark it in your calendar that Sunday, June the 18th is our Christchurch Wool Fest, which is one day where all the traders come together and we get to um, sample a lot of product from around the country and we get to buy lots of product, which is really nice. It's a real fun day. There'll be lots of traders there and I think it's actually one of the biggest premises that the organisers have had so far. So I think it's about three times the size of what we had last year. So it should be a really good, uh, a really good event. So mark that one down in your calendar. The other thing I wanted to mention is I'm actually recording a few days earlier than I normally would. Uh, and that's because I've, re I've got a really busy four weeks uh, ahead of me and I'm not really quite sure when I'm going to get to record my next episode. So I wanted to do one a little bit earlier rather than three weeks late. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm coming to you um, a bit earlier. What I thought I would do today is uh, I wanted to put closure on 2021. So I started recording my podcast around August and prior to then and from then I have completed quite a few objects that I have shared with you on previous podcasts but I thought I would just go through them all and have a chat about all the ones that I did and show them to you and talk about uh, things that I liked and things that I didn't like and then just put closure on 2021. I can put my journal away because I have now finished everything that was in my 2021 journal. And then talk to you about my 2022 plans. So I have started my journal for this year and I mentioned in my last podcast that I'm gonna to try to be uh, a lot more mindful of my knitting this year and have a plan. I do have a lot of patterns and yarn of things that I want to do so I'll go through those with you uh, rather than just buying yarn and buying patterns and not having a plan I do actually have a plan for this year so I'm really quite excited to share that with you. The other thing I wanted to mention quickly is I had a, one of my viewers message me and tell me that she could no longer watch my podcasts because I said um too often. So I'm really sorry about that and I'm going to be really mindful not to say um too often. I'm sure I will still say it. I did just want to remind you though that I'm not a professional. Uh, I've never done broadcasting. I have never done public speaking. I'm just a knitter pretty much like you my viewers um the difference is that i've just chosen to get onto youtube and share it with you so i do try to give you good content and i try to be as professional as i can but i do apologize if i say um too often i hope you can just ignore it <laughs> um and i hope it's not that distracting that you have to actually leave my channel so yeah here we go um, earlier last year, before I started podcasting, I completed this project and it's called Winter's Beach Cardi and it's by Andrew Maori. There we go there. You may be familiar with it. I knitted this, um, yeah, it was quite early last year and the yarn I did it in is 100% merino and it's from Touch Yarn. Um, I did 
talk about touch yarn in my last episode uh, it would have been episode 11 but they do a beautiful 100% merino now this cardigan has a lot of detail I'm hoping that's going to show up it's got a lot of cable a lot of moss stitch a lot of ribbing it was knitted in the flat um, it does have pockets I did put the pockets in it has wee little pockets there yeah quite a lot of detail beautiful big warm cardigan um, that I haven't worn for a few months because it's been quite warm but I'm sure I will wear it come winter I loved this pattern I did get through it quite quickly the only downside is that I wish I'd I wish my gauge was a wee bit tighter and that's my fault because I probably didn't swatch <laughs> um, it is quite drapey and it is a little bit oversized on me and I think I could have avoided that if I had um, tighter gauge it is in a dark dark brown charcoal color that is showing it up quite well but it, it's a beautiful cardigan it's warm it's snuggly it's soft it's just a wee bit oversized um would i knit this one again yeah probably but it, it there was a lot of work in it and i think you've got to be in the right mindset and really want to do it when a project contains so much cable and moss stitch so yeah, I thought I'd share that one with you. So that was earlier this year that I did that before I actually started podcasting. But yeah, so that's the Winter's Beach Cardi. Lovely pattern. The other one I did before I started podcasting, I'm going to show you the pattern, but I haven't actually got the garment to show you because I actually knitted it for a friend and I gifted it to a friend. Um, but this is an Isabel Kramer pattern called Manu. That's it there. Um, it's DK and I did that in the Southlander DK, which is a New Zealand yarn. A uh, little bit rustic looking, but it was a beautiful jersey. I was really happy with it. Um, it fitted It fitted her lovely the uh, person that I knitted it for I actually didn't have her size but I thought she's a wee bit tinier than me but a little bit bigger than my daughter so I just winged it and sort of did something in between my size and my daughter's size and I was 100% happy with it I wish I had it here to show you but I would seriously recommend that pattern if you wanted a winter jersey I would um, she lives down in Dunedin and the weather is a little it does get colder down there than Christchurch um, but yeah sometimes um, people will ask what I want to do a I want to do a, a jersey an oversized type jersey for my daughter that's going off to university you know that's really cold I'd recommend that pattern because it does have you know a nice bit of detail with the color work but it's also a very casual easy pattern to wear not too difficult but really rewarding and I would definitely do that again I I do want to do one of those probably for myself but I have other color work um, in my queue so I won't be doing it anytime soon but I do recommend it so that was Manu by Isabel Kramer so that was another thing that I accomplished now I'm going into um, garments that I did share with you throughout my podcast one of the very first garments that I shared with you was um, one called pink fizz and it's also an Andrea Maori pattern I'm going to show it to you here pink fizz I swatched for it was happy with my swatch happy with the wool I used prosper yarn which has a wee bit of linen in it but do you know not everything is a success story and sometimes some things get frogged and they get put away never to be finished. I don't know what happened with this because I am seriously close to finishing it. I've done the back and the front. I have to, I have to do a little bit more of the front. Join it up and just do the sleeves. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of work gone into this. And I have done quite a substantial amount of it. 
but I just fell out of love with it. And I don't know why, and I'm a little bit upset that I haven't finished it because it was quite a big investment in money and time. But like I thought, I should share my wins as well as my um, not so uh, things that I don't accomplish, you know, my losses. It's not really a loss, but um, not everything's 100% successful. I, I do hope to finish this, but at the moment I'm not in love with it. So I think it's going to go back on the shelf. Um, to be quite honest, I'd be really happy if someone had finished it for me. <laughs> that, that would be the ideal scenario, is that someone puts their hand up and says, look, Lisa, I'll just finish it for you. Um, but that would be almost like cheating. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I talked about that in episode one. Now, I did do some socks. Um throughout the year but I won't share socks with you because that would be all just a little bit too boring the next one that I finished was um, a pattern called floozy 2 and that's by truly myrtle and she's a, a New Zealand designer and this is it here now with this one I have done a floozy 2 a few years ago and um, long sleeve but what I did with this one was chose to go short sleeve and I absolutely love this top. I love the colour. I love that bright pop of pink and the bit of white. The black is a beautiful black yarn. It's from a company called Fibre to Go, and it's her primo, her primo range, which is um, pretty sure it's a hundred. Yeah, it's a hundred percent fine merino, and I really recommend it. It's got. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. You can actually, it's got beautiful stitch definition, the black and, and the pop of pink and white. I really love this top. I do wear it quite a lot and I would do it again if I found a colour that I just loved as much as that pink on, on the black. It just, yeah, highly recommend it. Um, and I, I'd recommend giving it a go in the short sleeve depending on where you live in the climate that you live. Um, it's done in a, a, a fingering weight yarn. We call it four ply here, but I think in the States you call it fingering. So it is done in a light fingering weight yarn and it's um, it's beautiful. Yeah, I'll definitely do that one again. Okay, I've missed one. Let me go back and find it. So I'm actually what I'm actually doing here is going through my journal. That I've talked about before that I recommend everyone should keep. Ah. So the next one that I did, and I haven't got the pattern to show you because I think I've um, I think I've given it to a friend to do. So I need to get my pattern back. But it was the ranunculus. I'm sure everyone's done a ranunculus. It's it's an amazing pattern. I know most people, most knitters that I know have done a ranunculus and I absolutely love this. It's light, it's drapey, it's a beautiful summer top. It's short sleeved. The colour, I feel really good when I wear the colour because it's quite bright. The yarn I used for this was 50% alpaca and 50% silk. And it was Blue Sky Fibres, and I bought that from Skeins here in New Zealand. But it's very light, it's very drapey, and it's a ranunculus. It's gorgeous. Definitely would do another ranunculus. The next pattern that I did, and I shared this one with you, and it was a Caitlin Hunter pattern, and I love Caitlin Hunter patterns. And it was the Miss Arena. There's that pattern there. If you have been following, you, you may remember, I did have a wee little bit of a drama with this pattern. I started it and I got down, probably halfway down to the yoke, the halfway down to this colour work, and I decided that my gauge wasn't good. I hadn't done a swatch, and the fabric that I was creating was was too dense it wasn't loose and drapey enough so my theory is if in doubt rip it out um, 
I couldn't see the point in continue knitting it, even though I'd done so much work. So I actually pulled it all out and I started again and I went up half a needle size. I think I went up one needle size for the colour work. And I am so glad that I did. It was such a good decision to rip that out and redo it. In all honesty, if I had not of, I probably would never have worn it. So that's my theory on things that you knit and you're not loving. Rip them out. Review, start again, do another swatch, have a play around and then go back and do it. And hopefully you'll get it right the second time. I... I didn't do any alterations to this pattern. I did swap out wrap and turns on the short rows. I swapped out wrap and turns for German short rows, which I do all the time. And you would have heard me talk about that. It is something that I often do. And I did add a wee bit more length to the sleeve. Um, in the pattern, I, I think it was only sort of an inch and I probably did three inches. The yarn I used for this was from Kiwiana and it's her high twist merino and the brown was a Malabrigo that I actually just had in my stash. So, and once again I do this I do wear this one quite a lot and I would definitely knit this one again. I do recommend it. Uh, you could even do it in a long sleeve I think or a three quarter sleeve depending on the climate where you live. It also has cable. It has quite a lot going on in this. It has, um, through each panel of colour work, is a cable. And then you have your colour work. Yeah. I don't know what you call this stitch, but um, that's actually optional, I think, in the pattern. You don't have to do the, um, the yarn overs to create that lace, the holes. Yeah. So that's Miss Arena by Caitlin. Caitlin Hunter, yeah, sorry, <laughs> um, had to had to just remind myself. Um, ah, yes, and this was my next project. So nice to put closure on all of these and have them finished, know that I've worn them, and then I get to share them with you. So the next pattern, take it out of the plastic is called Kuta Tea and it's by Sari Nordlin. When I come across this pattern, I loved it and I knew I wanted to do it, but I hadn't actually heard of Sari Nordlin. But since then, I search a lot of her patterns and I have quite a few of them um, saved in my favourites and in my queue. There's just something about her patterns that, um, that I really like. There's always sort of a bit of lace work, but that's it there, the Kuta tea. When I found this pattern, I did have the yarn in my stash. So that was, um, that was a positive. And it was actually a 50% merino and 50% cotton yarn that I used. And it was a Bellissimo St. George. I'll show you the ball band there. That's the yarn that I used. Um, it took six balls and I think I just followed the pattern as is. Um, it's not a light tea. It's actually, it's almost like a DK weight. Um, but that suits me, you know, on days um, in between seasons when it's not too hot, not too cold. And I have put my own little tag on there. I love putting tags on my top. It just, it gives them a real shop bought finish. Hmm. That's my Kuta tea. And I would definitely do this again. And I would, if I get to do it again, I'll do it in a lighter, a lighter weight um, yarn. But I have no regrets of the yarn I used. And um, yeah, I really love that one. What was next on my list? Socks, and then there's a few things that I didn't actually start. Excuse me for one moment. I got a, um, a lovely new coffee machine. <laughs> I didn't get it for Christmas. My husband and I bought it after Christmas at the sales, and I'm so happy with it. I probably drink too much coffee now. 
So the next jersey that I did, and I actually finished this one, I started it in September and finished it in October. That's the other thing about keeping a journal. I always write the start date and then when I finish it, I put the finish date. So you sort of know um, how much time you invested on doing it. Some things take a month or two, some things can take a year or two, <laughs> like my pink fizz. But the next one that I accomplished was Stripes by Andrea Maori. I had a lot of fun doing this jersey and I actually had all the yarn in my stash. So it was a yarn from Outlaw Yarn, who are based here in Christchurch. And for some reason, I had a big stash of lots of different colors. I think I was gonna do a Stephen West shawl, and that's why I had all the yarn, but I, I never did the shawl, obviously. And when I got the yarn out and I laid it out, Oh, I just couldn't believe how perfect the colours were that I had. So there's my stripes by Andrea Maori, and that was in Outlaw Yarn. Um, baby, no, it wasn't Baby Bandit. I can't remember. I'll put all this in the show notes, um, all of these patterns, if you want to go back and have a look. Um, this is, I, I just love it. I love the wide neck. Um, I love the boxy shape. It, there's not too much shaping in it. It is quite boxy. It sits lovely. Um, I haven't worn it a lot. There's a bit of peeling going on, but that happens. Um, I think some of the yarn's got a content of possum in it, and, and yarn with possum tends to peel. But I, I love this. It, it just puts a smile on my face, the colours. And um, and I'll definitely do that again. And like I said, it, it could really easily be a, um, a stash buster. You may find quite often we have favourite yarns and we end up with a wee collection um, of the same yarn. And I think that would be ideal for Andrea Maori Stripes. I love, she's actually done hers a little bit more cropped than I did mine. Mine's, and, I, and my sleeve's a little bit longer. I have seen, there's lots of projects on Ravelry. I've seen this done so many times and yeah, it's just a really good pattern and a really good jersey. Okay, the next project that I completed, uh, uh, September I started it and I finished it mid-November was this number, um, so it's called Jupiter. And surprise, surprise, it's Caitlin Hunter again. I did do quite a bit of Caitlin Hunter um, in 2021. So it's the Jupiter Crop by Caitlin Hunter. And I, wa I was quite excited about doing this because it was probably when I just started to have a real hunger for doing more color work, the stranded color work. So this, um, I, I really enjoyed doing it. That's the finished project. I did add a wee bit more length to the band. And I don't know what to say about this one. I have worn it, I have worn it a couple of times. There is one thing I would change. Once again, I wish I had gone up half a needle size. So the yarn that I used was from Outlaw Yarn and it was called Rebel Destiny Light. And this is a woolen spun. It's non-super wash. It's beautiful for colour work. It's quite grippy. Um, it's got that sort of grippy rustic feel, which is ideal for colour work. They call it a four ply, which I'm sure it is. But I wish I had knitted it up as maybe a five a sports weight. Um, yeah, we call it five ply here. I think you call it sports. But yeah, I wish I had knitted it up as a, a sports weight and not a fingering weight. Um, it's actually a very warm garment. So I couldn't wear this 
on a hot day, I would seriously overheat in it. So it's, you know, those days where maybe it's a little bit windy and it's a wee bit chilly, but you can still get away with the t-shirt. <laughs> um, so that's the only negative to that garment is it is quite um, a tight fabric and it is quite a warm fabric, but I really enjoyed doing it. Loved it, would recommend it. <laughs> um, so if you're up for a bit of color work, um, that's, that's what I did there. Now, now this is exciting because these are the, my recent finished um, projects. And it's why I wanted to do this episode where I put closure on all of my 2021 objects because when I recorded 10 days ago, it was the beginning of January, I hadn't quite finished these and I, I just wanted to get them finished and put closure. Um, to the year, but this is called the Sunday Crew and it's by Kate Oates Okay, so you would have seen this one and I'm going to just show you the yarn I did this in Here it is So this was really interesting I double stranded um, so it's Cascade Yarns, and it's alpaca, and it's lace weight. So, and it's this lovely earthy brown, but it's super, super fine. Now, I double-stranded that with this Aurora Mohair. Now, this is 67% Mohair, 28% Nylon, and 5% Wool. And... I wasn't sure about the nylon. I don't normally knit with nylon unless it's for socks. But the finished fabric is beautiful. It doesn't fluff too much. You know, some angoras kind of fluff and you end up with fluff up your nose and um, on your clothes. I wear a lot of black and this this didn't, you know, I've got a little bit of fluff on me, but nothing, um, nothing too dramatic. But this is the finished object. The light's got a good bear. It's a really nice earthy tone. The fabric is super light. It's super airy with a beautiful halo from the mohair. Yeah, that's capturing it really good. And I put a tag on it, which I love doing. It actually looks so shop bought, but that's a petite knits tag that I had. It has got this wee little detail on the front there, that little cross. Um, so it has the feel and the look of a really relaxed sweatshirt. I will get a photograph of this and I'll insert it onto this podcast so you can see what it looks like on um, because I really recommend it. It's got quite a wide neck. There was no ribbing on the neck, but I just picked up the stitches, knitted one round and cast it off. Um, that was on a provisional cast on. I was tempted to, to do about four rows of ribbing. I, I sort of thought, oh, it, it didn't look finished enough for what I'm used to. Um, most garments have that, you know, nice finished edge with a bit of ribbing. I'm so glad I didn't. I'm so glad I've just left that wide. It just rolls over a little bit and it just really adds to the, the casualness of it. What I did do, which the pattern didn't call for, is I've done a super long band on the bottom. That's it there. I think the, the pattern probably asked for about four centimetres, um, and I've probably done about 12. But I've done a super long band, which I'm really happy with, and I also did a longer band on the sleeves. It's just a two by two rib. So super happy with this, super happy with the yarn, the lightness. When I tried it, on, tried it on, I felt really good in it. What I will say is I actually tried this on a lot as I was knitting it. Um, it's the luxury of knitting top down is you can stop and um, try it on as you go. Because at one point I thought it was looking too small. Um, but I also knew that it would be quite drapey and loose. Um, but on the needles, it looked quite small. But it's perfect. It, it's really, it's just perfect. 
Um, the pattern in the pattern, she also uh, writes. You can do a striped version, um, which is quite nice and casual as well. But um, yeah, if you're after just a real casual sweatshirt looking, yeah, jump online and have a look at it. The Sunday Crew by Kate Oates. Um, so happy to have this finished. Yeah, so in my last episode, I was still working down the body, but yay, finished object. And last but not least, wow, I've, I, I seriously have had a busy year knitting. This way. Last but not least, da da da, is my buddy in Cardi. I did show you this last episode. So this is my first ever project that I steeped. Never steeped before, I was a little bit scared of steaking. Super happy with the way this turned out. I showed it to you last week, but I hadn't put the buttons on. Um, so I've gone with really simple, see what I say, just really simple basic dark blue buttons to match the dark blue in the color work. So there's the band. I will show you a photograph of me wearing this. What I loved about it, I still do love about it, there's, there's shaping, there's um, sort of A-line shaping through the body. And quite often I think, oh, what's one increase here or one decrease there? Is it really that important? Is it really going to make that much difference? In this pattern, it really has made a difference. And the shaping... It just fits beautifully. It looks good from the back. It looks good from the front. It sits well whether I have the buttons opened or not. Um, just a beautiful pattern. You can see um, there that she's actually knitted that very cropped. I did add probably I don't know, a good four inches because I did want it to sit under my sort of jean line. I didn't want it to sit up quite as high as what she's done it. Um, but if you want to give steaking a go, you've never steaked, I would seriously recommend this pattern. It's by Anna Johanna. I will leave some show notes. And I'll just share with you a couple of things I learnt with steaking. So you have a steaking bridge, and in this pattern, the steaking bridge was seven stitches. Um, if I did it again, I'd probably go nine. I'd probably add another two. I don't know why, I just, I would, because um, when I cut it, there wasn't a lot on either side, and I just would have felt more comfortable if I'd had that extra bit of fabric, so I'd probably do nine. The other thing I learnt, which was, um, it, it was a silly, silly thing, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just question, what am I doing wrong, why isn't this making sense? But if you read the pattern and trust in the pattern, there is normally always a correct answer. What I had done, so when you have your steep bridge, there's a stitch marker indicating that it's the beginning of your steep bridge and the end of your steep bridge. So when I was working in the rounds, I got to the part where there was body shaping and the pattern would say, work to next marker and make one left or decrease. So I was working to the next marker, which was where my steep bridge was, and I knew it wasn't making sense. It was like, why would I decrease here? Um, and I did decrease there. I did what she said, and then I worked to the next marker. And I only done a couple of centimetres, and I just knew what I was doing was wrong. And I read back through the pattern, and I just thought, you silly Billy. <laughs> yeah, when, it, when she says work to the next stitch marker and increase or decrease. She doesn't mean the stitch marker at the steep bridge. So that was my silly moment um, when I did this pattern. But it's, you know, I thought I'd share that with you because we, uh, we all do it. We all have moments where things just don't make sense um, or we're not reading it. Sometimes the penny just doesn't drop. <laughs> so that is my final projects for 2021 
yay <laughs> i'm su super super happy and what it means now blank page what it means is i can actually file this journal put it away because now i'm going to share with you my 2022 plan okay um thank you for letting me share all of that with you my 2021 journey and also my journey of youtube up till today um i hope you didn't find it too boring but um I, I had thought about it for a couple of weeks and I thought, no, that's really what I needed to do was um, put closure there and start a new year. So, yay. Uh, I did talk to you about my knitting journal last episode and I did have quite a few people come back and comment thanking me for their suggestions. Um, so, yeah, you can watch my previous episode for that. But um, I am, like I said, I'm going to try to be, well, I am going to be more of a mindful knitter this year. Uh, and work to a plan, um, not so much a schedule because knitting's knitting and some days you get a lot done and some days you don't get to knit at all. So yeah, the perfect day is when we get to knit lots. So I'll work through um, my list uh, of my 2022 plan. So the first one is I've been talking about for quite some time, but it's my Marie Wallen and it's called Ashlyn, I think it's pronounced. But this um, pattern is from her latest book, Cherish, and it's a beautiful book. It's got about eight or nine patterns in it, I think, and every one of them is just outstanding. I bought the kit to do this in the exact colours, and I bought that from the Woolly Thistle, um, which is in America, but you can also buy it directly from the Marie Wallen website. So that's the first thing on my list. I've also made a Marie Wallen knit along this year, which is on our Ravelry page. So unwind and knit with me in the community. And then you'll see there's a thread for the Marie Wallen knit along. So anybody that's keen, um, even if you started one and you're halfway through it, um, jump on and take some photos and share it with us. So this is a project that I won't be rushing through and I'm happy if it takes me the whole year and I will give you short progress reports on every episode on how I'm going. I have made a start and all I've done is the band. Well, I haven't even finished the band. I've still got, I think, another centimetre or so of the band. Um, so super happy, super excited. Love this yarn. I can't get enough of it. I love, <laughs> I love smelling it. If um, Wow, if you only ever get to knit one jersey with Marie Wallen's yarn, it's called British Breeds, it's her own brand. And I wish I could share that smell. It smells divine. It doesn't smell dirty, offensive, sheepy. It smells nice and fluffy, sheepy. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing on my list. And that is, like I said, a project that may take me most of the year. I'm not going to talk to you about socks because they're just something I always have going on in the background. I will share them with you as I complete them. Sometimes I knit quite a few pairs of socks and sometimes I won't knit socks for six months. So we won't talk about socks. The next project on my list, which I have also made a start on. Um, actually, I didn't show you. This was one of my last year projects. This was um, the Smora Beret. By Goodwin Johnson and that's from her Shetland Trader book and I will show you again because I'm so proud of it I just love it so that is a beret that I did um, and I did finish that last year and that's from this book the Shetland Trader by Goodwin Johnson and I have talked about this before but that's the smaller beret not a great photo you can only see the front but I have cast another one of these on and I want to show you the yarn because um, I really want to support this company because I love their yarn. So it's Purple Sprouting Yarn Company. Purple Sprouting Hand, hand Dyed Yarn. So Paula, this is Blue Face Lester, which is um, from the UK. It's a breed from the UK. And Paula from Purple Sprouting imports it into New Zealand and then she hand dyes it. 
So it's a beaut it is super it is um, a super wash yarn, but it's a very strong, hardy yarn. It's a lot stronger in structure with good stitch definition, but it's still soft, um, soft to the skin, like soft to touch. And, and I just love this. So I think if you've got any projects that maybe you want a yarn that's a bit harder wearing, I've actually done socks in this yarn, um, so with no nylon. But they're the colours I'm using. So there's the black, there's the gold, and then those three. Now I got these in a set of minis. So Paula does um, 20 gram skeins um, in a pack of six minis. And that's what I'm using to do this beret. And I have, like I said, I've just made a start and I'm just two rows into the colour work. And yeah, probably not, there's not much to see. But I have made a start. So that's my small project that I am working on at the moment. I know from the last one I done, I did, that it didn't take long. Once you hit that colour work, I, it didn't take long at all. So all going well, I may have that finished in my next episode. If not, I don't think I'll be too far off finished. But that's my second project that I'm working on. The next project is one that I have been itching to cast on for about six months. I have shared it with you before, but it's called Ember. And it's by Yuki Shimizu. Hope I said that right. Now this is a very loose, boxy style jersey. It's got a lot of positive ease. Um, and I've not really knitted anything quite like this before. The yarn that I'm using is Yarn Therapy. Once again, it's a New Zealand um, indie dyer. This is 90% wool, 10% linen. And they're the three colours that I'm using for this um, ember project. And I have cast it on. I've only just cast it on. Um, I'm on my first row. What I did do, it said to do a long tail cast on. And I have lately been swapping out a long tail cast on for the German twisted cast on because a pattern that I did called for it and I love it. It's just got really nice structure. It's got a really nice edge. Um, if you do want to have a look at it, I use the tutorials from Berry Pink Knits. Um, so they're on YouTube and I always recommend their tutorials. She does really good clear tutorials and she also does tutorials in slow motion. So for something like a German twisted cast on, there's quite a few different movements to it and it didn't come easy. It did take me lots of practice. So if you do try it, don't be disheartened if you don't get it the first go. Um, so this is um, a project that I will work on probably mostly. Um, so this is my big project that I'm really going to focus on. I've got my beret, which is my small project in the background, and my Marie Wallen, which is um, my longer term project for the year. So hopefully I'll have some progress on this, the Ember sweater, um, by my next podcast. But I will work through my list and once again, I hope I'm not boring you because I have touched on these projects before, but for me it's about closing to 21 and starting 22 with a plan. So the next project is Lovebirds by Kate Oates. Now Kate Oates, I just finished her Sunday crew, but that's the pattern there. It's not showing up too well, but jump onto Rav and have a look at it. Um, it's a boxy short sleeve sweater with colour work. The colour work, the colour yarn um, in the pattern calls for spin cycle, but I've chosen to use this yarn instead of spin cycle. So this yarn has been hand dyed and hand spun by one of the ladies at our local um, it's the Spinners and Weavers Guild here in Christchurch. They sell their yarn out of the tannery. So if you're ever visiting Christchurch, um, it's worth a visit to the tannery, to the, um, yeah, the Spinners and Weavers Guild. But 
this is just beautiful. It's, um, I, I wouldn't say it's any cheaper than Spin Cycle. Spin Cycle is very expensive here in New Zealand. But this has been hand dyed and hand spun, you know, on a good old Ashford spinning wheel. Uh, I just love it. And I can't wait to knit it up. But that's, oh, and I'm pairing that with this, once again, purple sprouting yarn. And this yarn is um, merino. I haven't got my glasses. I didn't bring my glasses back with me. But it has got, I think, 10% silk. And this also has silk. So they're just going to match up beautifully. So that's my main colour is silver. I'm pretty sure it's actually called silver. Um, and my hand spun yarn. So that's on my list. The next one on my list, and these will get done this year. <laughs> I promise, is Mealy. Sit there. I have admired this pattern for quite a long time and it still often pops up on my um, Instagram. This is by Knitting for Breakfast. Um, is the name of the, I wouldn't say person, but the company that brought out this pattern. And the yarn that I'm using is um, Brooklyn Tweed Loft. Now I bought this yarn last year, they're my four colours, that's my main colour and then my three contrast colours, they're showing up quite well. Um, I bought this yarn and anyone here in New Zealand, I'm not sure about the other part of the world, will know that Brooklyn Tweed's quite expensive um, so that's why it's really important for me to be mindful of what I'm knitting and get these projects done rather than spending money on yarn that I really don't need. So that's that. Um, so I've got my Murray Wallen, my Lovebirds, my Mealy, my Ember, my Smora Beret. The next one. <laughs> now there's a wee story behind this one. I had this yarn in my stash and I had originally bought this yarn to knit Wave Crest. And that's by um, Truly Myrtle, who is, as you may know, she's um, a New Zealand designer, Wave Crest. And when she bought this out, I loved it. And I bought the actual yarn that she recommended, which was this Surface Tonic, which I did buy from, I'd like to say Australia, but it might have even been further abroad. I know I didn't buy it here in New Zealand. It wasn't a New Zealand wool. So I bought a sweater, the sweater quantity to do that jersey and it's been sitting on my shelf and it's not ever been done. But, excuse me one moment. Um, during December, I mentioned that there were quite a lot of designers that had specials through the month of December. And one of those people was Jen, um, Jen Steingass. And I love Jen Steingass's patterns, and I want to do more of them. And she had a 25%, no, it might have been a 50% off all of her patterns for a couple of days through December. And I jumped online and I bought about eight. Um, and I'm not going to show you all eight of them. I thought I would just show them to you throughout the year as I um, plan to knit them. But I fell in love with this one called Alden by Jen. Steingas. I love the detail on the sleeve. I love the shape of it. I love the yoke. I love her colour work yokes. Um, and what appealed to me with this sweater is that it's a fingering weight. Um, it's a light four ply fingering weight yarn because our climate is often a bit too warm here for me to wear DK colour work jerseys. Um, as you know, once you do the colour work, it thickens the fabric. And I do find them just too warm. But this is um, a light fingering weight. And when I saw it and I saw the colour, I knew I had the yarn for it. And I was so excited. So I've, I had bought four balls of this. It's showing up a bit darker than it actually is. But it's, um, it's a very nice um, kind of sea blue. Uh, it's 85% merino, 15% Donegal nap, and that's the pink that I'm going to team up with it. 
it's just beautiful now to be quite honest this color is more like the picture than what it's actually showing up there um, so these colors are just going to be beautiful in that pattern so I bought the pattern and then when I saw the yarn in my stash I knew it had to go on my list so that is on my list for this year and I've got one more project that's on my list um, I know this list will grow but at the moment these are things that 100% for sure I am going to complete this year and I'm not going to buy any more yarn um, until I've worked through this list okay now I have shown you this one before because I've actually gone as far as swatching and it's called Lino and it's by Hohi Locatelli and it's a, it's a very fine fingering weight um, jersey with lace work down the front and there's also a bit of lace work if I remember correctly on the sleeve I might have that wrong on the cuff but it's definitely got that lace work panel down the front I did my swatch da, da, da. now this yarn that I'm using is yarn that I purchased from Denmark called Holskarn I did talk about this in an earlier episode. I know that you can buy this in New Zealand now. There is a yarn store in Auckland that stock it, but you can buy it direct. There is a bit, a bit of freight involved, but it's really quite economical. So this is 50% um, Australian New Zealand Merino and 50, if I'm remembering correctly, it's 100% wool, but it's a combination of Australian New Zealand Merino and um, wool from the UK don't quote me on that I'll have to get those details correct but I actually bought a couple of cones because I couldn't help myself <laughs> I really want to knit off the cone <laughs> so that is the last item on my list um, it is a bit of a sort of spring summery type top because the fabric that it's created you can actually see it's really quite light um, I know that this will bloom a bit more once it's be been washed. They say that the yarn actually has spinning oil on it and it feels sort of quite coarse and fine, but it does bloom once it's been washed. Yep, so that's, that's my whole yarn. <laughs> so that is my list, my plan, and it's in writing in my 2022 journal. Um, that's my plan for this year and like I said I, I know that I'm going to add to it I'm going to try not to be tempted to buy too much more yarn I do still have quite a bit of yarn in my stash that I have got projects that I can put it to uh, so I am going to do that <laughs> um, just a couple more things I have been going on for quite a while um, a dear friend of mine knitted me this gnome for Christmas and he's got this wee backpack with a wee little a wee little baby gnome in the back in the bottom of it it's like wheat or rice um, so he stands up beautifully I, I absolutely love him I adore him I didn't realize I had a thing for gnomes until she bought me this or she gave it to me and now I just love it and it just makes me smile every time I say it. And I did show that on my last podcast, but I thought I'd give you the details for it. So this particular gnome is called Leave No Gnome Unturned. There. And the designer behind these is Sarah Shearer. I will leave a link below. Um, and I think there's about... 10 maybe 12 um, and there's a bit of a series to these gnomes so you can make your own little family of gnome gnomes and like I said I didn't know that I loved gnomes until I got this one and now I'm a wee little bit obsessed the other thing with these gnomes is they're a great stash buster you could seriously use a lot of leftovers especially if you have leftover sock yarn I think would be amazing now my understanding is this is done in a fingering weight sort of sock ply yarn 
but you could do exactly the same pattern in a DK weight and you would get a bigger gnome. So the size of the gnome actually depends on the size, um, the weight of the yarn that you use. So there's a bit of flexibility there around what size gnomes that, um, that you actually produce. But he's, he's so, so good. The other thing I, I think it was about episode nine or 10, I showed you this K, this cable. It's from Petite Knits and it's got, it's called Put Your Stitches on Hold. And I did film a wee demo on how to use it. Um, but for me, I just wanted to mention it again because it's an absolute um, game changer. The last garment I finished, which was my Sunday crew, I did say I tried that on. I tried it on a lot. I probably, as I was working down the body half a dozen times. And the reason is because you can put your stitches onto this cable in less than, in less than one minute is how long it takes to get your stitches from the needle onto the cable and you can try it on and then less than a minute to get it back from the cable onto your needle. Um, which is quite remarkable, but also when you work in sleeves and that and you put them on hold, put them on the cable. The other advantage with this is when you put your stitches from your needle onto the cable and then back onto your needle, all your stitches are facing the right way. So you know sometimes when you used to darn your um, thread through with a darning needle and then you would put them back on your needle and then you'd have to knit into the back of them to get them all facing the right way again. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. That doesn't happen with this. They just slide back on perfectly the same direction and you're knitting within six, 60 seconds. Um, I do know um, a couple of my viewers did order these direct from Petite Knits, which is Denmark. I want to say it's Denmark. And for two packets, I think it cost her 18 New Zealand dollars. Uh, so they're really affordable. And I would, if you're part of a knit group, I'd actually grab a group of ladies and, and buy five or 10 packets um, for the freight because I think they only work out about five or six New Zealand dollars a packet. In each packet, you get five cables. So you get three at one metre and two at 1.5 metre. Um, so yeah, petite knits, put your stitches on hold. I just wanted to mention those again because I love them. I, I, I don't know what I'll do without them now that I've started using them. Um, I'm just looking around me and I think I've covered everything. It has um, been a long episode, so thank you um, for sitting through it with me. I hope I didn't say arm um, too often. I've just heard my say, myself say it a few times in the last couple of minutes, um, but I will work on that. <laughs> Um, I was just about to say, um, thank you very much for sharing this episode with me. I feel really good about um, showing all of my 2021 projects and sharing with you what my plan is for 2022. Do um, join our Ravelry threads. Like I said, we do have a Marie Wallen knit along, but we also have a knit along that's open to anybody that is, um, it's called your 2022 challenges. So anything that you're trying that may be a little bit new, whether it's anything, socks, working in the round, bit of colour work, maybe you're doing your first beret or your first beanie, maybe you're knitting your first lot of baby clothes, anything that's new to you or a wee bit of a challenge, jump over onto our threads over there. Throughout the year, I will have um, some prior, not some giveaways. Uh, I will put some bundles together of a few things and um, have a few giveaways. So that'll be a bit of fun, especially for international viewers, because the prizes will, will consist of New Zealand wool or New Zealand um, indie dyed wool or some of our beautiful merino. So yeah, jump on and join and yeah, be part of it all. Uh, and just a reminder too that I, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, anything that I do put together as giveaways um, is, is stuff that I've purchased myself or it's been gifted to me. Uh, it's none of it's sponsored at all. So 
yeah thank you very much once again if you're new to the channel please subscribe and share it with your friends and tell your friends about it um you can follow me on instagram or ravelry as unwind and knit with me i like i said i've got a really busy four weeks ahead of me so if i'm not if i don't do another podcast in two weeks it may be three weeks before i get to do my next podcast so i haven't run away um i've just got a lot of commitments on uh we are, we've got a few trips away um but local like local within the south island of new zealand for a couple of different events um i think that's it thank you very much stay safe everyone stay happy and healthy and i hope you get lots of knitting done Okay, happy knitting everyone. Bye.